we were all fools. While we were struggling in the desert, Claiborne sent his best across the sea to finish us off. His personal butchers, the Crimson Reavers, led by his nephew, Peter. We took the supplies we needed, but at a terrible price. Catherine's ruthless methods unified the local mercs against us. But we won't go down without a fight. The Reavers are just men. They can be beaten. There is still hope. Hey everyone and welcome to an Armored Warfare video. So today episode 3 of the storyline campaign has been released with the trailer you just saw at the beginning of this video. The purpose of this is just to give you a bit of information as to what's required to be able to complete this episode. The episode will run from the time this video goes live until the 12th of October. Because of the results of the last episode, the local militias have been united against us, the Seahawks. They've created a very tough fighting force. And now, to add to that, the Crimson Reavers have been deployed by Claiborne against us to try and hunt us and take us down. We still have a chance though, they're only human just like us. We're gonna keep fighting. Now, with that in mind, the objectives really are all about that theory, carrying on the fight. Part 1 is all about holding off the Crimson Reapers. You need to win at least 80 battles in the PvP game mode, not in Global Ops, for this objective to count towards your campaign progress as well as a pretty decent 750 gold. The catch here is you can only do 6 wins per day, which is 14 days worth of wins basically. And then even that is split down into being 2 of tier 3, 2 wins in tier 6 and 2 wins in tier 10. Problem is if you don't have a tier 10, that's only 4 potential wins per day. Each battle done in these tiers will give you a credit bonus and a bunch of global reputation based on the highest tier tank that you own. You can find the exact numbers for that in the blog post in the description below because it differs per tier. And that's pretty much it. You get those 80 wins and it will count towards your progress in the campaign. Super simple, nothing too difficult here. Just a little bit grindy. You're going to have to log in pretty much every day to get your wins. Plus remember, it's wins, not just battles. You're likely to have to play a few games per tier to be able to get your wins, because of course you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Or, if you really can't stand PvP, you can go for the option of PvE instead. The PvE represents the Seahawks forces scavenging for resources as they push west towards their ship. This is even simpler than the PvP objective. You have to win 120 hard PvE battles during the time of the event. There's no restrictions on how many per day though, so if you're bored enough or had enough time you could probably just sit and get these done in a few days. It also means that missing a few days is not as much of an issue like missing days of the PvP objective is. The reward for completing all 120 of these battles is a tick in the box towards your campaign progress, plus you will get the Commander Erin O'Connell or 1000 gold if you've already got her. Now I would talk about her current commander skill set, but since they're heavily changing the commanders in update point 22, find the details of that also in the description, I will say she is going to be transforming into a commander with her skills focused around the art of passive scouting. So if small AFVs, small stealthy AFVs is what you enjoy, she is going to be the commander for you, so absolutely push to try and get hold of her. In addition to both of these, there is a bonus objective tied to this episode. The Seahawks need a recon on the area they're going to be moving into in the future. What this means is that either 30 of the PvP battles, or at least 40 of the PvE battles, have to be completed using either the Tier 6 Fox, Fox Shark, or the BMP3. The reward for this is that you will unlock the Crimson Reaver decal, which to be honest is pretty cool, and you saw it in the upcoming video, so it is definitely something that I personally am going to try and get. In addition to this, if at least 30% of the people that complete either one or the two main objectives, if they complete this bonus objective as well, Catherine Grey will become a commander you're going to be able to get as a reward in future episodes. So that is absolutely worth pushing to try and get. More commanders is definitely a good thing. 
However, on the flip side, if less than 30% complete this, Catherine Gray's standing is going to decrease and the Seahawks are going to take additional losses. Strength of Seahawk forces and their standings are going to be important in later episodes, so I would really push hard to try and make sure to complete this, if only to make things easier in later campaign episodes. While for this campaign you do only need to complete one of the two objectives to be able to get a tick towards your campaign progress, there is an incentive to completing both main objectives. And that is a vehicle that's never been on the non-Russian servers, and that is the T-72 Victory Premium Tier 4 main battle tank. By all accounts, it's a pretty decent vehicle, at least those content creators that have it and I've spoken to, they seem to like it. I should be able to get my hands on it fairly soon, and I'm going to do a review on it for you so you can see whether you really want to push to try and get hold of it. It's a pretty cool looking thing and definitely something I'm going to be attempting to get. I actually missed most of the episode 2 of the campaign so I need to do both objectives anyway to catch up. And at the same time I get a shiny new tank. I cannot wait. And honestly that's pretty much it for the rundown of episode 3 of the campaign. It's not particularly difficult to achieve the goals this time around but it is much grindier. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on the victory and eventually the ultimate reward tank for the campaign which is the M1 Abrams AGDS. It's an anti-air prototype which is based on the Abrams chassis. But for now, more Armored Warfare content coming in the near future. Many thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next one.